Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to the video. I hope your day is going great. Mine's been amazing so far and the reason why I am hyped up right now is because Blizzard just announced amazing, amazing changes to Overwatch contenders in 2019. This all went down one hour ago. Blizzard made an official announcement on overwatchcontenders.com. Basically, there's going to be cross-region land play between the best teams from every single contenders region throughout the season and then it will all end in like a world championship style thing and the best thing about all of this is that all these major LAN and cross region play tournaments between these contenders teams is going to go down in between overwatch league stages and just when there is downtime in the overwatch league so now there's literally going to be no downtime guys we will be able to watch overwatch 24 7 whether it's the league whether it's contenders cross play LAN, playoffs stage playoffs they're literally going to be drowning us in overwatch play guys and I'm so damn excited specifically for the contender scene in this video I'm going to show you guys the announcement and break down every single little thing all the details about it How many events there will be who's going to play against two and the big big tournament it all leads up to as well as that We'll be talking about a bunch of other things specifically Davin who I'm sure most of you guys have at least heard of He is a European player and he's been competing in contenders for over three years now. He's won championships He's been on some of the best teams of all time in Europe, but for some reason he's still not in the league. What is up with that? We'll be covering all those details. Whew, we got a lot to talk about guys. If you're excited for this video, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Every single like really helps support the channel. You guys have been coming in through clutch lately with the likes, so thank you for that. As well as if you want to stay updated with the Overwatch League daily, be sure to subscribe because there's no other place where you will get news as soon as it happens every single day consistently throughout the entire season, so subscribe and now let's jump into it. Let's go ahead and jump into the Overwatch Contenders announcement. I'll read everything to you guys and break it down. So the title is Announcing Three Epic Live Events for Contenders 2019. They are indeed epic. Hi everyone, today we are thrilled to share details about several international live events planned for Overwatch Contenders in 2019. Hold on to your seats. There are three brand new live Contenders events on the horizon. Introducing Showdowns. We are dividing the eight Contenders regions into two divisions, consisting of four regions regions each to inform invites to our new showdown live events. Four regions will send their top teams to the Atlantic showdown, while the other four regions will send their top teams to the Pacific showdown. We've positioned these events during the Overwatch League mid-year break to maximize viewership potential and player recognition from the Overwatch League scouts. So this is awesome. It seems like Blizzard in 2019 plans to actually advertise contenders for once in their life. Yeah, it's crazy, right? They've put it at a perfect time so all the Overwatch League viewers will have something to watch as well as that. Overwatch League scouts will be able to sign players from these events. This is just incredible. This is amazing. This really fixes a lot of the issues that Tier 2 scene has had and we're just getting into it. Let's take a look at some of the details for the Pacific Showdown. From May 24th to May 26th, 2019, top teams from Australia, China, Korea, and the Pacific will face off in an intense double elimination bracket. Oh my god, double elimination, guys. That's what we've been needing for so long. I'm so excited to see that it's actually double elimination. Overwatch, for some reason, has never wanted to do double elimination tournaments, so this is great news. The dates, again, May 24th to May 26th, it will be going down all in China. They will be inviting one team from Australia, one team from China, one team from Korea, and one team from Pacific. Eh, I don't know how I feel about this. It's kind of balanced. I would have liked it more if it was like three teams from Korea, two from China, two from Australia, two from Pacific, or even three from China. But hey, you know, I ain't gonna complain. This is amazing. Now let's take a look at the Atlantic Showdown. Top teams from Europe, North America, and South America will meet in double elimination showdown between May 31st and June 2nd. The location is unknown, I guess. They put Europe or America so far. Teams invited, they will be inviting two from Europe, three from North America, and one from South America. Now, I know some people are going to complain, why is there two from Europe and then three from North America? 
Well, with the changes coming to North America, there's now going to be like 16 teams in North American contenders. God knows why, but the truth is that there is going to be a lot of European players being imported into North America, as well as Korean players, so... It kind of makes sense. It is kind of the hub where every single region gets picked apart and then comes to. So I, I get it. I get it. One weird thing is though, they did say there would be four regions for each showdown. Right now, I only see three. So maybe they're talking about North America having the two regions like they said. Eight teams on each region. I, I don't know. It's weird. But let's move on now to the gauntlet because this... This right here is amazing. The pinnacle of the season will be the gauntlet, which will be held from October 10th to October 13th, where a location will be announced soon. All top performing regions will send their teams from season two to the gauntlet. Performance in the Pacific and Atlantic showdowns will determine specific invites. And this tournament will be groups into double elimination. So this is literally like world championship level of tournaments. If you look at like Call of Duty, League of Legends, they all almost follow this type of system where you go into a group stage into double elimination. The teams invited will be based on the Atlantic and Pacific showdown results. Now, I'm sure they don't mean that they're going to invite the people that did good at the Pacific and Atlantic showdown six months ago, because if you guys look at the dates, October is when this gauntlet championship thing is going to happen. The Pacific and Atlantic showdowns are back in May, so that's a long time in between. I'm sure they're just basing how many teams they will invite from each region off of that event. So if the Korean teams at the Pacific Showdown destroy everybody, then that means they're going to invite more Korean teams. If Europe's the best region at the Atlantic event, then they will probably invite more European teams than North American teams. I'm pretty sure that's what they mean by this. The Gauntlet's tournament format will emphasize on interregional competition for maximum excitement. We've scheduled it after the conclusion of the Overwatch League 2019 season, when teams will once again prepare to sign players for the following season. Perfect. Amazing timing, and also, a thing to note here, guys, it seems like Overwatch League Grand Finals might be around September, because they're saying here it's going to start at the conclusion of the Overwatch League, so I'm guessing Overwatch League ends in 2019. Overall, though, these are some amazing changes for the contender scene. They really needed this. As someone who competed as a player and as a coach in contenders, it's tough out there, man. It's ruthless, and we've been covering it over the past few days, specifically because of the whole New York Excelsior's Academy team situation, but this is how you breed players into the Overwatch League. Before, the infrastructure was really weak. Specifically for regions like Europe, Australia, South America, and Pacific, they were getting starved. They had no money in their regions, no organizations, no way to prove themselves. It's like playing in contenders is a job that you have to do for free. And it takes up like five to six hours of your day, every single day. So it is a relief seeing that Blizzard is finally going to be supporting them with stuff like this. Hopefully they continue on this right track because now I see a ton of light at the end of this long tunnel that is Overwatch Esports. Before they were just pouring everything into the Overwatch League. And yeah, the Overwatch League did great and it was looking awesome. But everything behind the Overwatch League, the game itself, the player base, Overwatch contenders was looking kind of grim. This just put a whole bunch of light at the end of that tunnel, guys. I'm super excited for it. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about these changes. So I wanted to talk about Davin real quick because this guy has been consistently destroying European contenders over the past two years. Let's just go ahead and take a look at his track record real quick and then look at the players he's competed with that ended up going into the Overwatch League. So he has a lot of first place finishes and a lot of random LAN events in Europe, you know, the Assembly Cups, the Asus ROG tournaments. He always placed first there with Giganti, but let's look at the major tournaments only. Overwatch Contenders 2017 Season 1 Europe, the very first tournament he played in. And he took home first place with Giganti where they defeated Miami Misfits, which was eventually the team that did turn into the Florida Mayhem and all those players ended up joining Florida. So he basically defeated an Overwatch League team in 2017 Contenders. Then moving on to the second season of Contenders he competed in, which was the 2018 Season 1 with Giganti, he got second place at the LAN event against the British Hurricane, where he narrowly lost 3-4. to four. Then after that, let's look at Season 2 of European Contenders. He got third place overall, losing to Eagle Gaming, who did go on and win the championship. That was a close match. And then most recently, Overwatch Contenders 2018 Season 3 Europe, he took home first place, defeating Angry Titans with Team Giganti. Now again, Again, the crazy thing about all of this is that every single player he's competed with on these teams ends up joining the Overwatch League, or at least most of them. And this is just absolutely crazy, guys. That team that won first place in Overwatch Contender Season 1 2017 that beat the Miami Misfits, guess who was on his team? Zappies, Fraggy, Big Goose, Shaz, and Lynxer. 
Guess who all joined the Overwatch League? Every single one of them. Links are to the Houston Outlaws, Shaz and Big Goose to LA Gladiators, Fraggy to Philly Fusion, and Zappies joined Florida, leaving Davin the only player who did not go into the Overwatch League. Now looking at the Contender Season 1 and Season 2 roster that I competed with that got second place and third place, guess who was on that roster that joined the Overwatch League? Masa, Ripa, LH Cloudy, and RCK. Only person on that team that competed with Davin who didn't join the Overwatch League was Shatter2K, who had some wrist injury, who possibly could have joined the league. So again, four out of the six players on his team ended up joining the Overwatch League once again. That's mind-blowing. Leaving him the only player not to make the Overwatch League two times in a row on two rosters that Gaganti produced. First of all, Gaganti, they have produced some serious teams and some serious players going into the Overwatch League. They have made a ton of money off of this. But Davin, how is he not in yet? The guy performs out of his mind every single season. There's rumors going around that he doesn't perform in his trials, but like, what does that even matter if he's going out there winning championships left and right and destroying every single team in Europe? He needs to be in the Overwatch League. If he doesn't get signed midseason, I'm gonna be mad. I'm gonna be very, very mad. So that's pretty much it for this video. Be sure to leave a comment down below talking about all of it. Of course, Davin, he's a big part of the contender scene in Europe. He really deserves a spot in the league. And then these big changes come into contender contenders is huge and it's probably going to allow Davin to make it to the Overwatch League no doubt. Anyways guys thank you so much for tuning into the video once again I hope the rest of your day is amazing be sure to drop a like on it and subscribe for more daily content see you guys later peace